Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me I have Janice Figoff. Starting a business is a multi-step process that can feel overwhelming when you're on your own, but Janice makes it easy to stay organized and keep you on track. Her goal is to help you with every step while you start your business and achieve success. Janice Figoff, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you, Michael. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Let's uh, let's dive right into the questions here. Why did you become a coach? So for me, I find coaching very inspiring and fulfilling. And I wanted to actually share my experiences and knowledge with others, you know, along the way with their journey. Um, growing up back in South Africa, I was ex- extremely passionate about helping others. And I want to empower them and give them the confidence to go after their small business dreams and make it a reality. I love it. That's great. That's a great answer. Question number two, Janice, what are you doing in your coaching business today that's unique? So the one program I have, the Money Dream Machine, is a five-part program, which is unique in a few ways. Um, Most programs have a start date, goals to complete, deadlines and an end date. Um, With my program, there's no end date and clients can have me all to themselves until they complete the program. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure or rush to complete the program. Clients can work at their own pace, uh, which has actually worked well for clients who are just starting the processing of getting their their business, the ideas or the dreams going, and they're not ready to leave their full-time jobs. What I also do is I would do weekly Zoom chats or phone calls to see how they're doing. And I hold their hand through the whole process and make myself available available to them anytime they need me. That's great. So it sounds like they can kind of work through it at their own pace. All right. Love it. Uh, question number three, where do you find your clients? So a lot of clients have been referrals and before pre-COVID, of course, I used to go a lot of, to a lot of meetings and get togethers. I also used to host my own workshops and meet people and get them to sign up there. Um, these days now, I do a lot more on social media. I actually spend a lot of time now on LinkedIn. I've been connecting with a lot of other coaches, um, a lot of other businesses, and I've made some great connections um, through social media. Um, and a lot of it still is connections and referrals. Love it. That's great. That's the, uh, that's the best one, best way to get clients. <laughs> uh, question number four, what is the biggest Absolutely. challenge that you face as a coach? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so for <laughs> me, the challenge is getting the program in front of the right audience. Um, mm-hmm. the point of the program is for the clients to be able to build you know what a solid foundation before they begin opening their businesses listen i know there are numerous coaches out there that will help you you know make six figures grow your business you know mm-hmm. help with social media but my program is before all that so i'm looking for clients who are only just thinking thinking about starting the process of opening their own business and besides the money dream machine um i have another challenge you know getting clients for QuickBooks, when they think that, you know what, they don't need it, you know, they can do it all themselves. And mm-hmm. they seem to come to me, you know, once everything's done and their books and everything are all in a mess. So mm-hmm. I'm looking for people before they start anything. I love that. I can, I can speak from experience that when, uh, when, when I, I started using QuickBooks for my business, things became a lot easier and, and I got, had a lot more clarity around uh, various aspects of the business. Yeah, that's good. Question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? Interesting. I think what it would be is in the beginning, I probably wouldn't have obsessed so much about my niche. Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot of times you obsess as a coach, you know, what's my niche going to be? Yeah, and it, mm-hmm. it took me a while to find it. So definitely mm-hmm. if I had a do-over, I wouldn't be obsessing. And the other thing is I would make sure I took more time for myself. In the beginning, mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of, I don't know about you, but I was doing a lot of back-to-back sessions. And it would be mm-hmm. extremely draining. 
and I yep. wasn't putting enough breaks in between. And it takes a couple of years, you know, to, to get the rhythm of that going and going, okay, you know what, maybe just one or two today, you know, take a break, spend time on myself. So those two things, if I had a do over, I would definitely change. Yep. I, I love that. <clears throat> I think, um, every, every so often I'll have, you know, three meetings back to back to back. And when I come out of that, it, definitely there's, there's exhaustion. So I love the, the thought of, you know, just taking care of yourself and, and making sure that you're filling your own cup so that you can show up, um, as your best self when it's time for you to show up. That's great. Yeah. 100% on that. And finally, our, our bonus question, Janice, if you had to pick one single book, uh, that you would recommend all of your clients to read, what would that book be? You got me on that one. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of reading. I also do a lot of, um, I like reading a lot of historical books. Um, mm -hmm. So you talking about more books um, to help them with their coaching or just uh, books in general? It's totally up to you. Just one book that, that you would recommend all of your clients to read, specifically your clients. I think we've well, stumped her. Ladies and I read, no, no, no. I'm just, I read a lot. Actually, my mother was a librarian, so oh, wow. I have a lot of books that I read. Um, I guess being an ex-South African and that, one book that I would recommend that I've really enjoyed and I've read it a few times is the Nelson Mandela book, Long Walk to Freedom. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it never, yeah, if you haven't read that, I mean, I'm looking at it now actually on my bookshelf. <laughs> I turned around to look at that and I would recommend that. That is a, it's such an inspirational book and I like things that are inspirational. And I think, you know, you come out of that feeling good, you actually question yourself. And it's sort of like, you know, he never gave up. So you're not going to give up. So that's something I would recommend. Yeah, I, I really love that answer. Most of the um, most of the guests that we have on this podcast are, you know, picking some kind of business book or coaching book. Uh, for, you know, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is frequently an answer, but I think the, uh, yeah, the, the Nelson Mandela is uh, very unique. I love that answer. That's great. Yeah, I like, so Jenny, I like to be outside the box sometimes. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Um, all right. So, so that's it. Uh, do you have anything Janice that you would like to, uh, to add to the conversation or pitch or promote? And also if you would please let us know where people can connect with you online. Right then. Yes. So a couple of places you can find me, of course, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, on LinkedIn, you can find me on my name, Janet Figov, F-I-G-O-V. And you can also find me, um, the money, uh, dream machine on LinkedIn. I have two different websites. You can find me um, themoneydreammachine.com. Um, and if you're interested in anything with QuickBooks, you can find me um, on the website as well, um, training on QuickBooks. And on Instagram, it's moneydreammachine um, on Instagram. That's fantastic. Janice. Fingov, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Coffee with Coaches. No, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. We'll see you all next time.